guys, of course, welcome to another video from me, the Scarander. And today we're going up against a guy named Dylan. I don't actually ask Tactical Monkeys on Twitter. Now, this is my last week battle in the LBA, and the only reason I haven't had my 11th one was because, well, I don't want to meet that opponent because he's making it to the playoffs, and I really want to showcase my team, really avoid that through and through. Uh, so my opponent here, I didn't really prepare myself that well. Besides the Pokemon that you see on the screen, he also had a Scissor, um, Rotom Heat, Togetic, and Scrafty. And I was fairly sure I was going to use uh, Scissor this match, considered a high energy. But th that is not what's happening, which was a bit annoying because I decided to use Garchomp here. And like I said, I did not prepare as well as I usually do. I really just wanted, or really here, I did see that Stoutland could really rip through his team. So I knew he was going to use Jirachi, so I needed Jirachi to, uh, or basically I needed Jirachi to um, showcase what it was all about. So I decided to start off with Tornadus in case, uh, or Thunders, in case he decided to leave with Jirachi. Because if so, I can find out his Scarf or his T-Wave set or anything like that. And then if so, um, deal with that properly. And besides that, he has a Gliscor, which has 2-hit killed by Stoutland. Actually, all of his uh, team here is 2-hit killed by Stoutland. So that was my only game idea, and he powered on trying to deal with the Glee score, and I needed my powered on to be toxic by it because I needed to be immune to uh, effects from Yorashi if he has the Ice Punch. So that was my whole game idea, and I'm just gonna go guns blazing and hope something works. So with all this in mind, guys, let's go. So yeah, my Thunders is actually somewhat defensively built now to be able to deal with Yorashi, and I'm very lucky that it actually leads with that. Uh, that is definitely what I needed, and he's gonna go for U-turn, showcasing that he's scarfed. Uh, I myself is actually expert built, but uh, I don't wanna showcase that. I kinda wanna lure him that I'm uh, specs or locked into something. And he's gonna go to the Gliscor, that's fine. I don't have anything that really can hurt it uh, straight on, besides, of course, the Sigilith, which has the Ice Beam. So I'm gonna go to my power on here, to basically to try to set up rocks. And like I said, I really wanted him to try to toxic my Powdown, or rather I was hoping that he would try to. Now he's gonna switch out and actually go to Blissey, which I thought was actually fine, because Blissey can't really do a whole lot, and um, as, of, as, as far as I know, it could have counter or anything like that, and I'm basically gonna try to find that out. So I'm gonna start off with the Stealth Rocks, and he goes for Toxic, and I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> I so much needed that, because I don't... I don't suffer too much by Toxic, and like I said, that means I am immune against Hiroshi's uh, potential freeze if it goes on Ice Punch. So having that in mind was super important throughout this game actually. So there is a bit of a stalling here, I mean, we get the residual effects of Toxic, Sandstorm hits, and of course the leftovers, but with all said and done, he's actually gonna switch the Hiroshi out, which I thought was, you know, that was okay. I decided I think to go for an EQ, I pretty much tried to force him to... Um, uh, well, to um, switch out really, but my Earthquake does so much damage, it is actually a very very unfortunate crit on his side um, and uh, that definitely forced him to switch out to the Gliscor and I did see that coming. I decided to actually go for Ice Fang in this battle because I just wanted to scout out how much damage that possibly could do. Now, this is a 4 times effective hit and I'm not gonna lie, it does roughly, roughly 50% and that's that's really bad, that is not what I expected. I could expect a potential roost here to go for an EQ, but decided that the Toxic will, of course, actually start to really hurt me, and I need to switch out. And uh, like I said, the Gliscor is not really a big threat for me this battle, because I can deal with it. Yorashi is the one that I am actually the biggest issue with. So he's gonna go for roost, like I said, that's fine. And um, I'm gonna force him out there by going for Psychic. Now, I do pack the Heat Wave, but. I didn't want to showcase that, I'm actually scarfed myself, but I can't, um, how do you say, I can't outspeed Yorashi since it's actually naturally faster and now I know it's already scarfed, and that's a big deal. Uh, so Psychic here, I will score a crit yet again actually, but um, as you guys see there, there is not a whole lot happening for that crit, and uh, I did see that he's very likely to go for an Ice Punch here, and I basically just want some uh, rocky helmet damage on him. I can't survive two hits and I knew that, switching in, I basically just wanted to set up the sand again and uh, with the damage there, it looks like if I weren't toxic that I actually would have survived the onslaught but now I'm in a range where I can't risk it 
So we're gonna decide to switch out yet again actually and uh, I'm gonna go into my Chansey because um, if he scores a freeze then I have a natural cure I can just switch out and I was thinking that if Chansey comes in and he's do so little damage then I can actually like have a chance to switch, double switch out to Stoutland uh, because I will outspeed everything on his team no matter how he pulls it off and he does switch out, he's not feeling safe staying in and like I said I would have definitely done the same play as he did, and that's why I have to switch out myself. And Stoutland is basically gonna come in and bop something. And uh, I was fairly sure I was gonna sack this Tornadoes, not um, not thinking that I could 2-hit kill a Gliscor. Uh, but he's gonna bring the Gliscor. Actually, as I said, he, I think he thought he could take that better. Nothing, nothing takes this. Nothing can live that onslaught. Um, Gliscor is a very, very bulky defensive Pokemon, but even with Choice Band, it's too, always a 2-hit KO, and I knew that, so I was really glad he did that switch in, because that is a major pressure out of the way. Um, now, he will go to the Jirashi, and I knew that a, a return is a 30% hit, and I was thinking that, you know, that's close of killing him, so I'm risking the potential flinch. I knew that it would done around 50%, luckily I don't flinch, and the return is so close of killing him. And now I'm in a range where I can just switch back into my Kipowdon and take the Iron Head and uh, basically from here kill him with um, Rocky Helmet. And I really wanted to do something like that and then force him to bring the Superior and actually that, that the Superior was supposed to kill me here. Because now I have the Sand Up, he has nothing defensively left that can take uh, the Stoutland Returns. I do leave with a Slither of Health there, but like I said, I don't see the point of uh, keeping him powering around because it's. I just need to stand up and now I can just rip through the freedom with Southland. That was my only main idea. And he's gonna go for Leaf Storm. Sadly, he misses it, which is actually really, really, really sad that he does because it's so unfortunate considering the given circumstance. Um, and with that in mind, I actually pull up a slack off, which I wasn't intentionally trying to do or anything. I was actually, like I said, I was trying to psych you power or sack you power on it. That was not what was going to happen. So I take the chance to actually save your powder then and switch into Tornadus and um, he's gonna go for Leaf Storm and Sally's gonna miss again, so that's a 2 miss hit, I mean that's 90% hit and it's very very unfortunate that he missed that. Now mind you, I did actually bring Tornadus here because I thought it would take Leaf Storm better, I obviously didn't and I should definitely have lost Tornadus with that switch in. Then again I should have lost the powder in the first place. Because I'm really just losing sand, precious sand turns. And I did not go for Hidden Power Ice there because I was fairly sure I was gonna switch out. Um, so that's actually surprised me a bit. So I'm gonna go to Stoutland. And um, yeah, I mean, you know exactly how this story ends. He's actually gonna switch out. I think he brought Blissey here. Or did he sack something else? Uh, oh, the Slowbro. Alright, and the Slowbro is not taking this hit after Stealth Rocks. It just is not. Um, it hurts so badly. <laughs> it just falls apart. So anyway, that's slow right away. Um, actually, Tornadoes and... Um, let's see, Tornadoes and... Uh, the um, Superior do outspeed my Stoutland naturally, so I need to stand up again. Like I said, had he powered on, gone down from the first Leaf Storm, this thing wouldn't have been as long as it was forced to be because I need to set up the stand again. And obviously not me having a smooth rock complicates things. So he's going to go for Hurricane, that's a 50% hit I do believe, he do land it though and the Powdown is going to finally go down, which like I said, this is the way I wanted it to go in the first place, so a bit frustrating actually that the Leaf Storm did miss because it actually forced me to prolong the spell much more than I needed to. So I'm going to bring Southland yet again of course and he's going to switch that out and actually bring, if I remember correctly, the Blissey who actually can survive um, return from the Southland. Um, which was really cool, I did not expect that, I mean it's close of killing him, that's like an 80% hit. Um, but he's gonna showcase me here now that he has to protect to stall out turns and um, yeah, good call, good call. That is definitely something that um, that is gonna help him here and definitely prolong this battle a bit more and um, the police is gonna fall to of course the fourth who always comes through in this kind of games. And it goes for double protect, but do fail. Um, I think there's like a 70% chance that it actually works, or even worse, I think it's 50. So it's a gamble, and he needed to do that. 
So he's gonna go to the superior, which is definitely whittled down, and uh, I'm basically gonna bop it. It's it can't do anything from this range. And his last Pokemon is the, the Tornadoes, and sadly, due to given circumstance, he can't defeat my Chansey, and I knew that going in. I was really sh sad that um, the Sandstorm was was at uh, oh. Sorry, that it did stop because that forced me, of course, to go to Chansey and just uh, slowly defeating him instead of just um, going for a turn with the Southland. Now, it does land the Hurricanes, so it's a good thing I actually switched out. That obviously does not do a whole lot of damage. And he's gonna go for a knockoff here, followed up, and I thought that was fine. I decided myself to go for a T Wave, shutting the Tornadoes down so it's not the big threat that it could have been had he got the momentum for it. Now, he will showcase me that has superpower. I decided to go for soft boil. I basically, I could have gone for attack move, but I also knew that this thing could learn, um, what do you call it, superpower, or actually with grass knot, never mind. Um, but then after this, he will actually go for the superpower. And it's actually close of killing me after when a violet is gone, it is easily a 50% hit move, or even worse, I think that's closely to a 70 hit move. Not bad. But sadly, it's not gonna be enough, and since he loses attacks at the same time, I'm just gonna go for soft boil again and you know recover while he loses attack from the superpower. And uh, there is no way for him of coming back, so he's just gonna decide to forfeit. And we win this battle, I believe, 5 0, which is a very, very nice score, really. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this game. I. Like I said, I was playing a bit safe here because I had no real game idea going in. I basically knew the things that needed to uh, I needed to get rid of to make use of myself and as best as possible. And that was my only like game idea. Now it did work really well and I think my opponent had a rough time adjusting to that situation. He had a speed advantage and I just I needed to make sure that that was not an issue for me throughout the game. And luckily his Yurashi was scarred, which means I could work around it much better than I was supposed to. And I think the result kind of reflects that, that you know, it, it came it came to a game where I just could force on um, forcing him out over and over again until something died. And of course the crit with the pod on um, on the slow bro really really made it hard for him to come back. Since that was actually a mega slow bro, which he definitely did not get the chance to showcase. Which, you know, that that's really bad. I thought it deserved to actually turn that battle around with Mega Slowbro, which obviously didn't happen. Um, but anyway, Tactical Monkeys, thank you so much for the game. And like I said, I'm really sorry about the 5 0 win. It was probably much more extreme than it needed to be. And uh, yeah, we're on the playoffs, and I think it starts next week here. So um, yeah, we need to prepare ourselves for that. I don't know my opponent just yet. The last games are going down today and tomorrow. And uh, that's basically going to decide whether or not I'll face David or not. Um, like I said, I have one more game left, but I just I don't see the point of having that game. Depending on how other matches uh, ends up, of course, hopefully today with a bit of luck. If worst case scenario, then we're just going to settle for a forfeit because I don't have any use of a win really as, as of right now. Uh, but anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching as always, make sure to leave a like if you like this battle, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and remember, the sky is limit, right? And I'll see you guys tomorrow, until then, take care, bye.